Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in the cyclist tactics and in today's video I want to show you some of that uh, procedural stage generation and tour generation that we currently have going and will have going in the game as a major feature and this is of course still alpha version uh, so quite early on you would say uh, it's not perfectly tuned just yet so keep that in mind and some of the UI might be a little janky but anyway let's go into the single race stuff here because that gives us all the customization options and I will also mention of course how that is all linked to what you will find in campaign play or career mode rather so you have the league setup which doesn't matter difficulty doesn't matter there team doesn't matter um, this is not influencing the stages. And what is influencing the stages are these predefined race selection um, choices you have there and the custom race setup if you so desire to make one. So let's go through um, first off some of the classics. So for instance the Desert Sprint. And that is a race in Dalua and one of the most uh, famous ones in the game world that uh, we have in the game's universe. Uh, one of the most prestigious ones to win. It's um, rated at 9 out of 10, where the only 10 in the game is the Tour of Gazmir, kind of the equivalent to the Tour de France in the real world. The Fruinian Masters, oh, let's first generate one. So here we have an example case of the um, Desert Sprint and if we regenerate you see that uh, yeah it's mostly flat it is an archetype flat stage and we get various degrees of flatness here um, this is almost a little flat hilly I would, would think there's a lot of flat here overall it's quite long um, these settings from it are just copied over to this panel here so you can follow along what it is set to and what it means and what comes out of it as a result so we can regenerate it a few more times you see oh this is quite long mostly downhill but there are a few little hills in there and that yeah look, look, looking good um, plenty of options in here they are all in their nuances quite different oh yes nice uh, falls flat everywhere um, and now if we go to the Fruinian Masters and generate that one, you see that this is the archetype hilly. Woof, that is a big final climb there. Uh, that's looking more like it. Oh, wow, okay, that's, that's tough. Um, also very long race, over 500 nodes. And the rough calculation you to get a, a feel for what that means is to divide the number of nodes by two in order to get it in kilometers in length. So this would be just above 500, uh, almost 500, uh, 500, almost 260 kilometers in length. So a very, very long race. And again, to stress that, this is the hilly archetype of the stage building. So how does it work though? So these stages, we have now looked at two classics, they look quite different. We could take the Sky Race as well, much shorter, it can be much shorter, between 350 and 500 instead of 500 to 550. It is the Archetype Mountain and if we roll these you see that, oh wow, okay, there's some really big climbs in there. And you see it's very different in style looking than these hilly stages which have much shorter climbs. So how does this all work? Okay. Let's get into that. Um, probably best best shown here. So, the um, the way we build these stages is the following: we have end parts to the stages that are um, categorized according to archetypes, and not all end types have just a single um, archetype assigned to them, but several. For instance, this ending could be the ending of a mountain stage as well or a hilly mountain stage, or maybe even, I don't know exactly which ending this is, but maybe even a flat hilly ending. Um, it would be hard for it to then be classified as such because the end piece matters a lot in assigning the category of, of it, like this rating here, the, this is a hilly stage, it has been analyzed as a hilly stage. 
Um, but yes, um, so we have an end piece that is generated first, or first randomly chosen from the list of allowed end pieces for that archetype. And that can be an end piece of various different archetypes, but they are all themed such that they kind of work. And there's a big, big selection for those end pieces. And the end pieces are all randomized too. What it is based on is um, basically me saying, okay, we do want to have, let's say this is the end piece here, uh, starting there. We do want to have a flat section that is between 10 and 30 nodes long. Please roll a dice and choose how long this section is. Okay, so we've ended up with 18 nodes. All right, let's generate the train. Then we want to have a hill that is between 20 and 40 nodes long. All right. Oh, well, uphill section that is that long. Okay, roll that. Then we want to have a downhill section that is 20 to 40 nodes long. All right, roll that. Then we want to have a little flat section that is 10 nodes long. Exactly 10 nodes long. Okay, yeah, cool. R roll that then. Um, these rolls that you can have are then again random for what kind of type of flat it is. For instance, you could roll a negative 2% flat section, or you could roll a plus 2%, or a 0%, or a plus 1, and all that. And they are distributed um, so that the more extreme versions are less common than the more archetypal ones. For, in for instance, a flat section has the highest chance to generate a 0% flat um, in slope, 0% slope. While a 3% is possible, but quite unlikely. Um, that gives some variety to it all, that you see some outliers sometimes, and it's never quite the same. And then, to finish this off, then we have a finishing section that is between uh, 10 and 30 nodes long that is uphill. Okay, cool. So now we have the end piece that is uh, from here to there. Now we check the overall length of this piece, and what we do then is subtract that length from the target length of the stage. And what comes then, you can probably guess, is that we then start to design it backwards and assign certain archetypal types to it. We have small hills, we have hills, we have large hills, we have small mountains, and we have large mountains. Um, so... And of course, a short flat section, a long flat section, a short cobble section, a long cobble section, a short cobble hill, a long cobble hill. And depending on the archetype of the stage, in this case hilly, we are assigning chances to pick these kind of building blocks. But these building blocks are also random. So you do get a, a nice var variation of hills. These two hills that you see here might have come, come from the exact same um, initial building block, but they look completely different because of how they rolled. It could also be that this is a small hill and this is a hill. Um, you don't quite know. And the, the stages thus always look different and play different too. Anyway, so we go backwards here until we hit that limit that we have rolled. In this case, a random number between 500 and 550. As soon as we hit that target that you don't see, um, we are going to stop the generation process of the stage and place the start line there. So that is currently at length 554. So we have overshot a little bit the target. Um, but I assume the target that was rolled was somewhere in the 540s and then it overshot a little in generation, which is fine. Like a few nodes here and there don't really matter that much in length. All right, so this is how a stage is generated. Quite complex, but what it does is give you basically endless variation. Just look at how many different types of stages you can make with just a single archetype. And if we go through, I can show you some of those. If we change this archetype to, um, oh, sorry, needs to be a classic, but we have the following archetypes. Flat, heavy, no, we start there. Hilly, heavy, cobble. All right, let's generate. Holy shit, out. That, uh, ow. Um, 
there are some grey zones down here. A little hard to see for some of you, especially those with, um, uh, with monitors that are a, a little, little wonky. Um, cobble sectors are shown, depending on their severity, down here, next to the red stuff, um, down here in grey. And they probably need to be a bit more obvious. But yes, so there are a lot of cobble climbs in this one. And uh, the red sections are technical sections. Also, the, the brightest red are the most difficult uh, technical sections, while the lighter uh, red ones, the more um, transparent red ones, are not as severe. Cool, so uh, let's uh, just do a few of these. And you see that, holy shit, yeah, there's not only a lot of variation, but these stages look absolutely brutal. And they would be. Um, I've had several instances where the AI was uh, a little too aggressive, let's say. <laughs> They're completely running out of energy and attack. They were just snailing along in the end. Um, one, one funny thing that happened uh, once was before we taught the AI how to uh, actually conserve energy compared to for the length of stage and difficulty of stage that is left, um, and they were getting to the final cobble climb and they could only move the minimum allowed movement of one node per turn. <laughs> and I was the, the only one who was complaining a lot of about uh, why are they moving so hard? This is, this is too hard. This is just too hard. And then I was the only one who had some energy left to creep up that hill, that final hill. Uh, and the others were all massive amounts of time back. Um, but anyway, so uh, there are a good variety of stages in there and you see just how different they can be but they're all following that archetype wow this is looking tough oh, so many cobble climbs there towards the end um then we have the flat heavy cobble looks very different very different lots of cobble sectors here as you see kind of the paris roubaix style then we have the flat light cobble where cobble sectors are not usually uh, completely uh, stage defining, um, but they can add a, a little piece in the puzzle that you need to solve as a sprinting team. Um, so these are the flattest stages that you will find. Oh, well, they have, along with these, the um, heavy flat, uh, flat heavy cobble, and very much less severity on those sectors of cobble. Then we have flat stages. Flat stages do incorporate some more hills than um, the uh, light cobble stages. Then we have flat hilly as an archetype. You see there are a few more hills in there, but usually it doesn't end on a hill. Uh, then we have hilly, and that quite often can end on a little hill, on a little punchy hill. And this features mostly smaller climbs. There are no bigger mountains in there. Um, for the most part. Then we have Hilly Mountain and you will see that the hills are getting larger and there might be one or two mountains in there sometimes. Like here. Here we have probably this would be a second category climb or even a first category climb. There's some really steep stuff in there. This might be a second category uh, and up to the finish uh, always is if it is if it would be a categorized climb on its own then if it's also a finish it is assigned that category plus one, uh, or rather minus one, because cycling is stupid in that regard. Um, going after what, what gear a car had to use to or in order to go up that climb. It's a little outdated nowadays, but um, yes. So some really interesting stuff there as well. Um, what you would expect from hilly mountain stages. And then you have the true mountain stages that are usually either finishing after a large mountain or on top of a large mountain and there's some brutal climbs in that wow that climb that's an hc category climb for sure okay oh okay that finally oh, oh okay these red sections there those are 14 percent so uh yeah that 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 is uh that is not easy <laughs> i hope uh, you recover some energy all the way down here that because that there's fun. holy shit um, anyway, I think that nicely shows how 
the single stages are being made. Of course, you can change the, the length that you want. Uh, we can make shorter stages where, of course, then the end piece is a larger piece of the puzzle. Currently, the stage profile is completely stretched, so it appears a little weird. We are going to make it such that it's also scaled down and uh, thus appear shorter. This is a little confusing at this moment. But now, now let's let's go into tours. How do tours work then? Well, they're kind of similar. It is a collection of stages. And for instance, if we go and uh, simulate or generate rather the uh, tour of Gazmir, uh, then we have our 21 stages on 23 days. And that will have to change that it's not counting the rest days there, but just leaves them empty. Um, starting off with a, a little prologue, a long prologue actually, 48 nodes. It's decently long. That's uh, a smallish time trial, I think. And we have another time trial there on. Oh, it's also very. That's a very short time trial. And this is a very long prologue. Uh, this one is flat, as you can see. Uh, so, um, anyway, what we do have in here is a collection of stages that is um, generated as part of the archetype of the Tour of Gazmir. If we regenerate, you see that these stages, the color is what you would expect. Green is for flat. Um, this slightly uh, olive colored is flat hilly. The yellow is hilly. The orange is hilly mountain archetype and red is mountain archetype. Then you have cobble in there. This is a flat light cobble stage. On uh, stage number two, interesting. And um, then you have the archetype of time trial in there as well. And just as an icon. So as you can see, there's a lot of variation in that too. Oof. That's that's a little nasty to have a cobble stage on, on the second, no, the third, third to last day. And oh, finishing in the time trial. Nice way to put some pressure on the riders there. Um, anyway, so you see lots of variation there. Currently, the um, generation mechanism is that it it generates uh, the weeks and rest rest days. It looks at how many rest days do you have. You can reduce it by one. Then you see that it automatically places it in the middle. If you can also have zero rest days, fun times, and you can have all the way up to twenty five stages. Then, but yes, that is a little too hard, I believe. Um, so 21 stages and two rest days is what we went with, yes. And the archetype of this tour is Hilly Mountain. We can go to Mountain, of course, so you will see some more mountain stages and Hilly Mountain stages that way. Even the first stage was a <laughs> a um, very punchy one, uh, a very punchy prologue up a, a slope. So let's see... Um, yeah, well, how, how does that work? How does it split up the stages? Well, it sorts them into categories and then tries to put some of the harder stages in the last week uh, so that it's um, making more of a difference then. And also it tries to place time trials and prologues, of course, in uh, good places. Like a team time trial can only occur in the first week and um, individual time trials can be whenever but are favored to be in the last week and yeah start stuff like that and we will further fine-tune the distribution of these so when you are building yourself a new rider in career mode you're starting your first season and at the start of the first season all the races of the season all of these that are in the season all of these are in there in either pro or uh, amateur tour um, accessible by not everyone some races are not accessible by the pro riders or pro teams rather other races are not accessible by the amateur riders um, yes so when it generates that it selects that archetype of the tour this is the Giro Froini, for instance and then we get a generation like this and at the start of the season you have all those races generated and they will be different every time because of that um, and very much different holy shit that's that that would be a fantastic way to finish a tour wouldn't it it's like okay you only had one mountain stage this counts as a mountain stage because this final climb is pretty hard um, 
yeah, that's some really steep stuff in there. Okay, but otherwise, it's not not super difficult overall. And then, bam, okay, mountain stage. Oof, that's a, yeah, that's a long climb. Almost falls flat down there and then ramping up towards the top. Um, some very technical descent too. That would be a, an interesting one. Uh, and then you finish off with a time trial that looks like this. That's a long one too, considering it's uh, all in mountain. And with really tough technical section in there. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah, that's stuff you can't do in real life. Like, you wouldn't be able to put in a a super dangerous technical section on the last day of a tour in a time trial, where you're on your time trial bike and everyone just straight up goes into the ditch. Uh, of course, there is no falls in this game, which is why we can easily get away with this shit. And it makes things awesome. Uh, so, this is cool. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, it generates all those stages and tours at the start of the season. When you're in single race mode, like this here, uh, Vista Hedvesia, let's generate you. Um, a shorter tour, uh, 14 days of racing, just a two week, uh, two week tour, with lots of climbing, of course, Hedvesia, super uh, mountainous. Um, if you don't like a certain stage in single race mode, then you can regenerate that certain stage. It will then keep the archetype of that stage alive, but you will generate within that archetype different stages. It's like, ah, oh, do you like this one better? <laughs> 208, it's very short. Um, but yeah, 280, 414 in length. Yeah, that's, that's pretty tough. 420, oh, okay, we like this stage better, we say. <laughs> and maybe you want to regenerate the time trial. Um, nah, I like this. Oh, this is... That's an odd one. I like it, though. You start on a fucking steep hill, and then it flattens out and just goes down towards the finish there. Nice. Um, yeah, some really interesting time trials in here. And that one currently can change archetype um, according to what is allowed within the Vista Hedvesia. So you can roll for for different ones. Um, as you can see there, the, the archetype actually changes the color there. Um, holy sh wow, that is steep. Ouch. All right, um, and a long one too. <clears throat> but I think we have illuminated a bit more how the stage generation works, uh, in what situations it is relevant, and um, how yeah, how you can make how the tours are working, and what that all means, and yeah. All, all good, right? Any questions? Ask them below and I'll try to answer. So I hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.